Okay. I am uh, going to try to finish up Chapter 17 today on electric potential. And the uh, topic we'll be dealing with mostly is how to use this concept of change in potential, potential difference, to tell us about the behavior of electric fields inside matter, particularly inside insulators. We already have some idea of what happens inside a conductor. And we'll start there first as an example. Uh, and we had a question at the very end of class last time. So I want to start with this example of a capacitor. So we have two metal plates. One is positively charged. And one is negatively charged. OK, so a capacitor inside the gap in between the two plates. And let's say this distance is S. And what is S equal to? Let's say S is 2 millimeters. So 2 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. That's a charge plus Q and a charge minus Q. And let's uh, say point A, location A, is right on the edge of the positive plate. And location B is exactly uh, opposite to it on the uh, negative plate. And um, what do we know about the field inside a capacitor? Inside this capacitor gap, the electric field is pointing what direction? To the right, OK? And the magnitude of it is what? Q over A over epsilon 0. You had to use this last night for a homework set. So the, the, the issue is that it's, a, it's in the approximation that this distance S is much smaller than the size of the plate. So the radius of the plate is stretching far beyond what we can see on, right on the board. So it's, it's a small gap. And so the field is mostly uniform inside. We can use this uh, constant field approximation. So Let's, in fact, we're not even, we're, I'm not even going to worry too much about the charge or calculating the uh, field from the area. Instead, let's just say that we know the potential difference, VB minus VA. And let's say that's negative 1,000 volts. And let's double check that, that the sign is correct, because if we're going, VB minus VA is telling us we're going along a path that goes from A to B. And we're going in the direction of the electric field, so the potential difference should be negative. Okay. So what's the electric field? Well, VB minus VA is negative E dot delta L. And I already know the direction, so let me just find the magnitude. The magnitude is going to be the magnitude of VB minus VA over the magnitude of that distance, and it's really delta x here, right? Because we're just looking at ex delta x. It's only in the x component. Uh, so that delta x is the same as the distance s. Okay, That's the separation. So we have 1,000 uh, volts divided by 2 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. And that gives you an electric field of 5 times 10 to the fifth volts per meter. OK. Now, I've got the same capacitor, same charge on the plates, same distance between the plates, same everything, except I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to insert in between the plates a slab of metal. So I'm just going to put a great big parallel sheet of metal that has some thickness. This is metal here. OK. And so this plate is still positive. This plate is still negative. And let's say the distance, let's say this is 0 0.5 millimeters. 
from A to this surface of the metal. This is a one millimeter thick metal slab, and this is another half a millimeter. Okay. What happens? What happens to the metal? Char, okay, let's be careful. It's it's neutral. It's a neutral slab of metal. So is it going to still have? Is going to end up with a net charge? No. But what is going to happen? What's the? It's going to polarize. It's going to polarize. So what's going to happen on the this surface? It becomes a negative negatively charged. Okay. So and this side positive. Okay. So I just want to you know be careful about the language. It's polarized. Then it's still neutral. The net charge on the entire metal slab is zero, but it has a separation of charge now, negative on one side, positive on the other. Okay. So here's something, an idea that we should all be familiar with by now because it showed up on homeworks and quizzes and again on the tests, right? What is the net electric field inside the metal? Zero. Okay, so E net's equal to zero. But that net electric field is due to two contributions, right? We still have the electric field of the, our original capacitor, which is pointing in what direction? To the right. So I'll say this is E of the capacitor. So that means what? E of the induced charges or the polarization charges on the surface of the metal has got to point to the left. And what do we know about that E? on the metal. That electric field is, is say got to be the same as the E on the capacitor. So the electric field of the metal is going to be what we just worked out. The magnitude of it is going to be 5 times 10 to the fifth volts per meter. Okay. Now our job is to figure out two things. One is well, it's kind of one related thing. But how much charge is on each side of the metal? And then what is the new electric field inside the capacitor, or inside the gap, inside these air gaps within the capacitor? You know, a point here and a point here. And let's think about the metal first. Squint your eyes and, if, and kind of hold your nose and ignore the presence of the plates for just a second. And just think about this polarized slab of metal. Here's one surface that's positively charged. Here's one surface that has the exact opposite negatively char negative charge, parallel to each other. Inside, what does that look like to you? It looks like another capacitor, doesn't it? It looks kind of like another capacitor. So the electric field due to the metal, the charges on the metal, should in fact be equal to Q over A over epsilon naught. Well, it's the same area as our original capacitor. There's no dependence on the distance, right? Because if we're if the gap is small enough, then the field is uh, is uniform. So how much charge ends up on this side? Uh, let's let me say let's put it this way. Let's say this is some positive Q. All right, and this is negative Q. How much charge ends up on this this surface? Negative Q, right? Because if this field is the same, then this charge in this formula has got to be the same. And so you end up polarizing negative Q on this side, positive Q on that side. Now, squint your eyes and hold your nose again and look at just sort of this half of what we've got. We've got positive Q here, negative Q here on this surface. In between, what have we got? Another capacitor, right? So now it's sort of like having two capacitors one uh, after another. So what do you think the electric field in here is going to be? Sh should be the same as it was before. Should be the same as it was before. Approximately, okay? Because we're, we're ignoring one thing. We're ignoring the fringe field, okay? This polarized slab, okay, behaves like a capacitor itself, but there is a small amount of field that it makes outside of its borders, okay, and we saw, we talked about that being this, the fringe field, the field outside of a capacitor. 
But if we ignore that, that small amount, it's going to be small compared to the field inside. The electric field in here should be 5 times 10 to the fifth volts per meter. The electric field in this air gap should be 5 times 10 to the fifth volts per meter. And in here, the net electric field, we said, is equal to zero. Okay? So now we have sort of three regions, one after the other, with three different uniform electric fields. Okay, and there's a lot of stuff here, so let me kind of clean this up. And we'll, let's see, we'll get rid of this. And we'll, we still have our two locations, A, which is over here, and B, which is over here. Okay? So here's the question. Here's the question. 